All right, so um, we're still working on creating some custom annotations for our template that we're working on, and this is going to be creating some custom section heads and tails. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my template. Um, you can start from any template or file you'd like to if you want to follow. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a section since um, we don't have a section in this template, it's an empty file. So I'm going to go to my View tab and I'm going to left click on Section and I'm going to left click, drag, and left click. And that creates a section cut, which if we had a 3D model would cut it at this point in a vertical plane. And then this is the scope box, which would show elevational information stopping at this line. All right, so we have a section head at the top and a section tail at the bottom and a line in between. How is this thing created? Well, it's a series of nested families, really. Two system families and then two loadable annotation families. So let's select this guy, go to Edit Type, and you can see we have a system family section. We have a type of building section. And we have a callout tag, a section tag, and a reference label. And then we have some identity data that's associated with a view template. What we're interested in is the section tag, which is a type quality that has been attached to this building section. So if we left click on this section tag over here under value, it's going to, we have to click on the far right hand side, it's going to open up the section tag, the system family section tag, which has a type of arrow filled section tail and filled horizontal two applied to it. So you can see you have this one section head and one section tail. So these are the loadable families that we're going to work on. Create a system family section tag. Let me go ahead and cancel this. And then apply that to a system family section. So you have section, section tag, and then two loadable families. So let's go ahead and get moving on it. All right, cancel. To access these, I know that this is a section tail, and or sorry, this is a section head and this is a section tail, and I could open those from the Revit annotations. So I could go under the R pull down, go to Open, and go to Family. And if I go to Annotations, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see section heads and section tails. And I would always kind of recommend starting from one that you're familiar with. So there's the section head filled that's being applied right now to that one. And then there's the section tail filled that's being applied to that one as well. Um, the other way of getting to them is if you scroll down in your project browser and you expand families and you scroll down, you're going to get that section head filled here as well. And I have a bunch of additional sections heads and tails in here. And then you have section tail filled horizontal, I think it was section tail, we'll just use section tail filled. And I tend to do it this way, so let's start with the section head. I'll select that, right click on it, and go to edit. And it will immediately open that up in a separate window. The project is still open behind us. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to save it as a different file because I don't want to save over the original because I want to make a new one. So I'm going to go to File, Save as Family, and I'm going to navigate to my custom library and go to Annotations, and we'll save this as Section Head Custom. We'll just All right, so save. All right, so now what we want to do is update these. Now this works very similarly to the levels and also the title block labels. These are labels which are parametrically connected to the section, so they update based on sheet and detail location. So you may not understand that right now, but if I pick this, I can come over here and go to Edit Type, and that will allow me to update that label the qualities of that text. So I'm just going to change the color to our red and 
you know me, I like Century Gothic, so I'm going to go down here and change this to Century Gothic. And click OK. And you're going to see that all of those are the same label type. So if I pick that, you're going to see label 332nd, label 332nd, so they all updated. Now, I don't really want this arrow. Okay, I'm just going to sort of come in and, and delete this. Now, the key in this is that this arrow is pointing up. And this particular, so I'm just going in picking these and deleting them, the filled regions, is to keep the same orientation. You know, you know that that arrow is going to be different depending on which way you draw the section, but as long as you keep the orientation the same on this as it was on the previous one, it should work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fill pattern inside the top of this so we know that it, when it's being sectioned that it's looking that way. So if I come into Create and I go to Filled Region, it's got a solid filled region. So I can go ahead and go to select lines. So I'm going to pick this line, that line. I'm going to go to edit type. And I don't want the color to be black. I just want it to be like maybe a light gray. Click OK. Click OK. And check. All right, so now we've got a light gray on there. All right, and you could maybe even accent it even more by picking that line, and instead of section marks, you could do a wide line there. And I'll save that to save it back to my library. And then that project that I had open, if I go to WT, is still open behind this. So what I want to do is I want to load this section head custom into this file. So I'm going to highlight it, load into project and it automatically loads it and makes that project current so if I scroll down you're gonna see section head custom come up there alright so the next thing I want to do is do a section tail so I'm just gonna pick section tail filled go to edit it's gonna open that guy up and you can't oftentimes in these they have the reference lines and the annotation some of the annotations turned off so I'm going to go ahead and turn them on. So if I go to VV, it opens up a visibility graphic override. And if I go to annotation, I can turn on reference planes and dimensions. Click OK. Now this is the origin and this is the origin. So if I want something to be facing like this will always be facing the way the section is because of its location so if I want something to face that way I should draw it in that same orientation so I'm going to select this and delete it and I'm just going to come in and let's go to create and I'll draw a line how about an arc start end radius and then we'll just draw a line maybe from here to here and then I'll do a filled region right go to select lines I'll just pick that and that edit type instead of black make it gray to match the other one click OK now finish that Oops, so it looks like it's not solid. So let's pick that guy, go to edit type, and instead of diagonal crosshatch, we'll make it solid. All right, so now we're good. Now I'm going to go to File, Save As, Family. Make sure I'm in my custom library, which I am. Section Tail Custom. I'll just name this Custom. All right, save. Now I want to load that into project, so I'm going to go load into project, and because there's more than one open, it's going to ask me, do you want to load it into section head, family, or custom template, and I want to load it into custom template, so I'm going to click OK. Custom template comes to the front, so if I have that highlighted and scroll down, you're going to see section tail custom come up. So I'm going to maximize this. And now I'm going to create a new section family and a new section tag family. So I select my section 
edit type, duplicate, right, and I'll call this building section circle gray. Click OK. Now I want to put a create and select a new section tag for that. So I'm going to come over to the right part of the value column row and left click and it's going to open up the section tag system family and I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to kiss, come over and I'm going to say section head circle gray and section tail we'll name this arc gray. Now I could have just named them custom but I'm making them a little bit more descriptive. Click OK. Now I want to update the section head and the section tail to reflect that. So section head, custom, right, section tail, custom. section head, just making sure, and click OK, and click OK, oh, and now you'll see, oopsie, I got that one is pointing like that, I'd prefer it to point the other way, so I have to go and update that and then we have the section head, which is actually gray. It's showing which way it's cut. It'd be a little funny because the text would be half in and out, which could be interesting, but this is a bit of an odd one. I've made some other ones, so if I pick that one, we can come down and there's a section, building section red, right, which has no circle, has the note in the middle, has a red and a red. And then I also have a few other ones I think another one that's easy to see is this one which has an arrow with lines on it. So that's how you make a new section. So you can go in and sort of play around with that. It seems quite complex at first, but if you take a look at how it's actually organized, you have a system family called section that has a type, right? So section building section square would be possibly the name of this one. Um, if you come over to the default Revit one, it's a system family called building section. It has a section tag, which is a type parameter. And in the default one, it, it has sec it's called section head open, section tail filled. That section tag has loadable families, the section tail and the section head selected as type parameters for that. You can open up either one of these and adjust different characteristics of those. So loadable family section, system family section tag, and then system family section. All right, so that's it for sections. You can also sort of do some spelunking around and figure out the elevation tags, which are complex, but work very similarly to these. So I would suggest that anything that you want to change, you can sort of noodle around or look up and um, not have any problems with updating them, I don't think. All right. The next installment will be inserting our title block into the template and saving it.